There's really only three or four grasses in our mm -hmm. central Florida area. Uh, you got St. Augustine grass, you've got Bahia grass, you got a few people with zoysia and even less with uh, Bermuda. Yeah, and so and I have actually, and it stays a nice silvery blue as well. Now you pronounce, I have a question. You pronounced it Bahia. Sure. I get and in you're trouble. Bahia? Bahia? No, I pronounce it Bahia. I'm a St. Petersburg native. I was born and raised, and we always called it Bahia as yes. well, but I always get made fun of for not pronouncing it correctly. So thank you for proving me right, It's Mark. Bahia. So thank you very I, much. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll stick with Bahia grass. I me mean, too. Uh, now, if they want to call it Bahia, 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 all right, whatever. Uh, but. Oh, hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut, and um, this week we're going to take the Tuna Can Challenge. But this one is going to be Tuna Can Challenge for those of you who have an irrigation system, an in-ground irrigation system. So, so stay tuned. we got a lot of hot irrigation action happening all day here at Lawn Care Nut HQ. Cheers. Alright y'all, so today we're going to be talking all about watering because we're coming into the summer right now and what's going to happen is your lawns are definitely going to need you to assist with some water at some point, no matter where you live, north, south, east, or west, you're going to have to help your lawn, you're going to have to irrigate it. And so what I want to do is give you some strategies on this video and the next one that will help you to do that a lot easier. Now it's kind of ironic, it's actually raining right now, we are coming out of a four week extended dry hot period here in Florida that's been just hard, just terribly hard on our lawns. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to show you some things around the neighborhood, show you some things that I've experienced here in my lawn, including maybe why some of this back here looks a little bit like it's struggling a little bit. We'll talk about that. But really what I want to do is first is tell you exactly how to water your lawn. And when I say that, when I tell you how to water your lawn, I mean like the official way that everyone will tell you. Universities, experts, applicators, lawn companies, lawn pros, everybody will tell you this is how you water your lawn. Now it might vary just a little bit by grass type, but really not that much. When it comes to the summer, almost all grass types, what they need is one inch of <coughs> tuna burps. So no matter what your grass type is, in a perfect world, in a normal year, and a normal year means that you're getting some cloud cover even during the hottest parts of the summer to help relieve the lawn a little bit, as well as you're getting some rain help from Mother Nature here and there. Those are the things that we're going to consider a perfect world. And when you have the perfect world, then your job as a homeowner is to give your lawn, no matter what the grass type, at least one inch of water per week. And typically, you want that one inch to be delivered over two waterings of equal amounts, and those are one half inch waterings each time. What that pretty much breaks down to is one half inch of water every three days or so. And like I mentioned, in most perfect years, that's going to be just fine. And in fact, you can get away with even less than that in what we might call a rainy year or a mild year. Now listen, it's going to vary a little bit. If you have super hard compacted clay soil, you are definitely going to have to get a half inch of water in in order for that to soak down through that. Where if you're here in Florida, where we have sandy soil, you only may need a quarter inch of water to get a watering on. So just to reiterate, that's the perfect world best case scenario. One inch of water a week, and you want to separate those waterings into one half inch sessions and put them about three days apart. If your perfect world is in line, then you're going to be good to go this year. Now here's the thing about that perfect world scenario. It's a little bit different if you have in-ground irrigation than it is if you have to water manually, but there are some overlaps. So in this first video, I'm going to talk to those of you with in-ground irrigation because you still need to know a lot of data in order to set up that irrigation properly. And trust me, you only have to do this once. I'm going to completely overcomplicate this process on purpose. Number one, because it makes the videos longer and more entertaining. But number two, because while you go through this long, tedious process, you're actually learning your land. You only have to do this once. And from here, you're going to be able to run it by feel, I promise. Okay, now folks with automatic sprinkler controller, I happen to have an original Raccio here. They're not a sponsor, but they did send me this free many, many years ago. Either way, it's much easier when you have an in-ground sprinkler system, but also because it's easier, you actually tend to be more lax. And I actually find people with in-ground irrigation systems are actually worse at watering than those that are required to do it manually. But either way, I have seven different zones, and all of you know that you have a number of zones, so I don't need to go through that. But what I've done is now is I've taken the tuna can challenge on each zone to understand how long does it take that zone to put down one half inch of water. Now I did this a while ago, but I'm gonna go ahead and redo it again here. It's always good to go over this every couple years because things change as you will see. All right, here we go, ready? So let's turn this on, front. Okay, so this is my first zone and you can see I've got a head here and then I've got here and it actually goes all the way down. And that's the first thing I wanna talk about is it's not always possible for your sprinkling plan to line up with your property map that you built and yeah, I got something going on here I got to look at this is another reason why it's good to do this 
shouldn't be bubbling that much. But either way, you can see here that this zone goes all the way down through here. And listen, not every sprinkling system was put in perfectly. It doesn't always have the right overlaps. Trust me on that. That's why you need to do this. So that's how that whole zone is. And now what I want to understand is, is how long does it take for this configuration of this particular zone to put down one half inch of water? That's what I want to do. And then of course, that's where our tuna cans come in. So the reason I talk about a tuna can and the reason we call this the tuna can challenge is because for years when I worked at TrueGrain, I would tell people to water their lawns the very same way I just told you with those generic recommendations. I would say, take a tuna can and put that out into the lawn. And when you get a half inch of water in your tuna can, then you know that you've put down a half inch of water on that area of the lawn. Now, interestingly enough, this tuna can is about an inch and a quarter. And for years, we used to tell people that a tuna can was an inch deep. So I don't know if that's a standard that's been released or changed or if I was just wrong all these years, but either way, what you're going to want to do inside your tuna can is mark one half inch. So that way, you know, when you're getting there. And in fact, if you're really smart, what you'll do is you'll mark a quarter inch and then multiply by two so you can save a little bit of time. You do that however you want. Always remember that it's okay to use your common sense and trust your gut when it comes to lawn care. Whatever you gotta do to understand how long did it take each area of my lawn to lay down a half inch of water. Now, the other thing is, as you saw, my zone out there is super long and it, it's, pro it's, it's not really set up the most logical way. The overlaps are not right. And again, you're gonna have those issues too. Sometimes you'll have giant overlaps. Again, you're gonna have to use common sense to understand what is the best possible scenario here to get down a half inch. But in my case, I'm gonna have to use a lot more than one tuna can for this particular zone. So, time to eat, boys. My whole garage is gonna stink like tuna now. Oh gosh, I'm gonna be in trouble for this one. I was really just trying to strain it and get the tops out so I could eat the tuna. I feel like I'm in an LA Beast video. Oh gosh, I didn't strain that one enough. Oh. Okay, now the next thing you wanna do is, depending how much tuna you felt like eating and how big your zone is, is set these out in the most logical spots. In other words, maybe where are the spots that would get the least amount of water? Again, you're gonna have overlaps and different kind of things, so just be logical or try to put them in an average area, something like that, that makes sure that you get a good idea of how long each area takes to put down half inch of water. It might be time to bust out a beer to go on top of that tuna, because remember, it's drink a beer, move a sprinkler, drink a beer, move a sprinkler. In this case, it's drink a beer, set the zone, drink a beer, set the zone, and I got seven zone so sounds like it might be a fun party so to keep things consistent with this example this is my zone one and it's a real long zone so I'm putting out more than just one tuna can in fact I'm putting out four because I just want to make sure that the zone is putting out evenly or at least somewhat evenly and if it's not that's where I might have to make some adjustment with heads or coverage or things like that common Bermuda invading I always point this out because every week I get questions from folks in Florida mostly saying out what is this weed growing in my St. Augustine and the answer is wild Bermuda grass. But the idea being get a good sampling of how long that zone is going to take to lay down one half inch of water and then record it, then move on to the next zone. You're allowed one beer per zone. So we're going to set it for 30 minutes. I know it doesn't take that long and hopefully yours does neither. But either way, I'm going to set it for 30 just to make sure that we're good. And I'm going to run it. Here we go. Okay, Google. Show me timer. So now we're running. And what you want to do is just check where you're at. Just check and make sure that your tuna cans are in a good representative spot for each area. I'm telling you, this is such a good exercise. You will no longer be blind to how long it takes your system to put down a half inch of water. I promise you. It'll, it'll open your eyes to irrigation. It'll be so much better for you. Even when you have an in-ground sprinkler system. The other one right there, that's a good spot. Some already getting in there. Okay, so while this test is going on, a lot of you are going to ask me, Alan, what if I have watering restrictions? Well, then it's your job to work within those watering restrictions. I'm just teaching you how to get the knowledge of how to get down a half inch of water. There may be cases where you have to change that up, but at least now you're armed with knowledge. The other thing is, a lot of municipalities, they allow for you to run your sprinklers outside of the normal times if you're testing them. And let me tell you, I test my sprinklers quite often. 
Another thing to consider is that some municipalities will allow you to hand water anytime you want. And that's where you just water the weakest spots. A couple different ways to work around things if you think that you need that. But again, in most cases, the perfect scenario is gonna be intact and you're not gonna have to you know, water quite that often. You're gonna get some help from Mother Nature, especially down here in Florida, where we in our rainy season, we actually really don't have to water very much in the summer at all. Even though right now we're coming off of a major dry period. Check out some of the damage I've seen to lawns. Four weeks with no rain, and if they weren't irrigating or their irrigation wasn't even close to keeping up, you'll see what happened. Hallelujah, first rain in like four weeks here, no joke. This is the second rain for the day, another good one. So this is starting to get into a nice pattern here. Little bursts of rain, good rain. Bursts of rain through the day, cool the lawn off, give it some good nourishment. This is what we've been needing here. What are you guys eating? Is it good? So every time I make a video like this, I get bunches of questions with bunches of different scenarios and people seem to be stuck on it. So let me just tell you this. When it comes to best practices, of course we tell you to water in the morning, but it's better to water in the evening than to not water at all. Just don't make a habit of it if you can help it. When we tell you to put down a half inch of water, in other words, water deep, well, putting down a quarter inch of water is better than not watering at all. Just don't make a habit of it and do the best you can. You see how that works? So there's always a give and take with everything you do, but you always wanna to strive to be perfect. If you strive for perfection and you fail, that's good. But if you strive for failure and you fail worse, well, that's bad. You get the idea? Twenty-four minutes. I'm not gonna say how many takes this is, but you get the idea. It's one beer per zone. Oh, where are we at here? Oh, oh, oh! Look at what we have. I have made fire. Oh, that looks like about a half inch, right? What was that? Twenty-three minutes. Let's check the other one. So oh, back. Oh, hey. That's why you wear flips. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, at this point, you're still steady enough to hold level. Full blast of cold air before you go in the house. You sober up before Mama sees you. Close enough for government work. Yeah. yeah. Only uh, six more zones to go. I better choose uh, a lighter, lighter beer on the next six. So in the end, with all my lollygagging and everything, you can see Front Street I had at 26 previously from my last test. And we're, we're right there, maybe 24, 25, but still it's fine. So now I know that that particular zone takes 26 minutes to lay down a half inch of water. Now I'm in Florida, so sometimes I might only want to lay down a quarter inch or whatever. But you know how it goes. Now when you have an automatic irrigation system, you actually can set this up to just run every three days. And I encourage you not to get locked into the every Monday, every Wednesday deal. Set it up to run every three days. And if you have a smart system like I do, the advantage to that is it'll do rain stops for you or rain skips. It'll understand when it's rained, it's hooked up to weather stations, whatever. So it really dials it in for you. And then from there, once you're on that pretty much regular schedule, you're good to go. And, and then if you get a dry period like what we've had here recently, well then you already know hey, I need to put on an extra half inch here, extra quarter inch there. You can just run individual times for different zones based on what that zone needs. You know, it's extra shady. It doesn't need as much. It's in the sun all day. It might need a little more. But at least now you've got a baseline of how long it takes each zone to lay down a half inch and then just by math, a quarter inch, which should pretty much get you going for the rest of the year. Now stay tuned because in the next video, we're going to take it a step further and we're going to talk to those of you that have to manual water because that's how I did my property up in Northwest Indiana for so many years. And I had, it's debatable how much I had because my memory is a little bit different now. Sometimes I think I had 8,000, but I think it was probably closer to 6,500. You know how fish stories go. But either way, it was easy to manage with one single sprinkler, one single head, or one single unit. And so I'm going to show you now how to set up an entire 
watering plan or watering strategy, irrigation strategy using a manual sprinkler. And we're gonna do that in the next video. So subscribe to the channel. I know I'm talking a little bit fuzzy right now. Maybe a little bit animated, maybe a little bit too rappy. That's what that treehouse beer does to me. With that, I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the lawn.